Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so today we will discuss uh, chapter number two, part two. That's the last chapter of chapter number two. If you guys remember, um, in the part one, we discussed the definition of cryptography. We discussed types of cryptography, and then we also discussed the uh, conventional symmetric encryption schemes. Today, we're going to talk about techniques of symmetric encryption. Specifically, we've, I'll give you overview of uh, stream cipher that we discussed in the last class we'll discuss stream cipher and we will also talk about the block cipher as well uh, and then we will talk about the modern algorithms specifically we're going to talk about two main algorithms in fact three uh, one is the des we will discuss the structure of des how it encrypts the data then just to give you the the deep insight of des we will discuss simplified des with example with a binary example uh, then we will talk about a AES algorithm, like the structure of AES algorithm and uh, like the key size and all that stuff. Uh, the second agenda item and the last agenda item of this chapter is the random number generators. We will discuss uh, what's a role of random number generator, how we can generate random numbers. And specifically, we're going to discuss four different types of random number generators. One is LFSR, linear feedback shift register. Uh, second is LCG, linear congruential generator. And the third one is the gold sequence. And the fourth is Kasami sequence. So we will be talking about uh, these four uh, random number generators. Okay. So let's move on and let's start our first agenda item, techniques of symmetric encryption. So if you remember in the last class, we discussed what is symmetric encryption. In symmetric encryption, both sender and receiver, they use the same key for encryption and decryption. What does it mean? It means we will have one key, which is a secret key, or you can key, you can say a private key. Both sender and receiver, they will use the same key to encrypt the data and decrypt the data. Okay. Symmetric means same. So technique, as we talked about, there are two main techniques to implement symmetric encryption algorithms. One is the stream cipher. Stream cipher, and that's basically good for the small uh, data, or for example, if you have a uh, a low cost application we use stream cipher and what is stream cipher we encrypt the data we encrypt the data bit by bit okay so we we don't have to make chunks we don't have to encapsulate anything directly we encrypt the data bit by bit second type of uh, uh, symmetric encryption technology or technique is it's called block cipher what is a block cipher? In block cipher, we encrypt the data block by block, like what we do. Before we start encryption, it has two main steps. Firstly, we need to break down the data into blocks. And after making blocks, the second is then we start encrypting. So in block cipher, we encrypt the data in blocks by block. And there is a fixed size of block depending upon which algorithm uh, you use. Uh, all the block ciphers like DES algorithm, triple DES, simplified DES, like AES, all these algorithms are basically uh, the block cipher algorithms. But again, you can customize or you can make uh, these algorithms stream cipher as well, depending upon the application. Let, let's say if you have a low cost application, you can do that. Uh, these block ciphers, they actually use a typical structure to encrypt the data and that structure is called Feastel cipher structure. Feastel cipher. Okay, what's this Feastel cipher structure and all these block cipher, they, they actually use the Feastel cipher. So what is this Feastel cipher structure? In Feastel cipher structure, let's say, let me just give you idea and then we will discuss uh, DES and AES, of course, uh, to, to actually have better understanding of it. So for the Feastel cipher, let's say this is your plain text. PT is a plain text. So for example, this is your plain text. What we're going to do is we will divide the data into blocks. So let's say, we divide the data into, let's say, two blocks, for example, okay? So we have divided the data into two blocks in Feastel Cipher. Uh, this is gonna be your left half, left half, and that's going to be your right half, okay, right half. It's the left half, and that's gonna be the right half. Now, what we will do is, Again, it involves some rounds, like all these algorithms, they involve 16 round, 10 rounds, depending upon the algorithm, what the round look like and what we do in the Feastel cipher. So what the first step is, we divided the plain text into two halves, right half, right half and the left half. On, on your life, uh, right hand, what we do is, we will actually take the bits and we will apply 
a function. Now that function might involve XOR operation, permutation, transposition, whatever the algorithm specific operations are going to be. And for to, to perform those operations, we use the secret key K1. Okay. Whatever the output will be, like after passing it through the function, we will discuss these functions. Whatever the output is going to be, this output will be XORed. We will XOR it with the left half. Okay. And then we will forward this XOR data on your right side and the data on your, uh, I mean, the right side data will be forwarded and it will become your left half data. Okay. So this operation, if you see this particular operation like this one, this operation is called a round. Okay. And again, there might be many other rounds. For example, when this will become the right data, what, what's going to happen now? We will again forward it. For example, if you have two rounds, let's say again, the same function, let's say you are using a different key, for example, K2 for the round two and whatever is going to be your output. This output will be XORed with the new left side. Okay. Now again, it will be passed back here and this particular right half will become the left side. Now this is called the round two. This is your round two okay so this structure if you see this structure in any algorithm that structure is called feastal cipher structure so very simple right half whatever i mean we divided the data into two pair two parts right half and the left half right half we will apply the function depending upon the algorithm using the secret key and whatever will be the output it will be exalt with the left half and then left will become the right half and right uh, will become the the left half and then if you have more rounds, you can actually put and the process will actually go on depending upon the algorithm. How many how many rounds do you have? So now let's see. Um, this is the feature cipher structure. And now let's see what is the DES algorithm and simplified DES and AES. Again, uh, the method is same like as we already talked about, uh, like uh, we have uh, uh, same key will be used for encryption and receiver has to use the same key for decryption. So the same algorithms that we talked about, we have DES algorithm. DES stands for data encryption standard. Then we have triple DES, advanced form of DES. Nothing special. It's just a rep repetition of uh, two more DES. AES advanced encryption standard okay which is basically the federal government standard they actually use this algorithm to encrypt the databases like where our citizen data is basically so let's talk about DES, the properties of DES, and the structure of a DES, how it look like first of all DES is basically a simplified form of uh, ibm's algorithm called lucifer uh, initially DES was designed in early 70s uh, but it was commercially it was available back in 1997 Okay, uh, the structure of DES algorithm, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, DES is basically a block cipher, but again, we can customize it, but mainly it's a block cipher. Uh, the size of a block, the block size, like the size of your plain text, you can say, the plain text block size is going to be 64 bits, like at a time, 64 bits will be, uh, we will actually process them or uh, encrypt them or whatever you want to name it. Uh, then. Again, as I mentioned, it uses, because it's a uh, block cipher, it uses a feastal cipher structure. And it has the key size of 64 bit. Okay, please remember one thing here. Although it has a 64 bit key, but what we do is we actually reduce the key to, reduce it to 56 bits. We reduce it to 56 bit using uh, truncation method, the permutation truncation methods. And then further this 56 bit key, I mean, we apply the operation, I'll, we will discuss here uh, in a while, we actually create 48 bits round keys, depending upon how many rounds are there. And how many rounds are there? There are mainly number of rounds are 16. So there are 16 rounds in uh, DES, like the same, like if you remember, these kind of rounds. So there are 16 rounds in the DES algorithm. Uh, 
And for each round, the for each round we use a key. Each round we use a key. And the size of round key is round key size is going to be 48 bits. So you can see this is the master key, the 64 bit master key. Both sender and receiver, they will have the same key. Uh, again, we will apply some operation to reduce it to 56 bits and then further reduce it to 48 bits to get the round key. Okay. And then out of this 64 bit, we will generate 16 keys. Okay. So for each round, there is a key. So you can say here number of sub keys equal to 16. So we have 16 sub keys for each round. Okay. Uh, again, when you will get the cipher text, cipher text will be also equal to 64 bit equal to exactly uh, the plain text. Okay, 64 bit. So these are some specification of uh, a DES algorithm. Let's see the structure of a DES algorithm, how it looks like, like how uh, the rounds look like and what we do in the different uh, round in fact. So in the uh, DES algorithm, you will have two main parts. One is the key generation mechanism. Again, both sender and receiver, they will use the same key because we have to reduce the key to get the uh, round key of 48 bits, 16 bit keys. So both sender and receiver, they use the same structure. So for example, let's say this is your uh, plain text uh, like uh, encryption side. So you have a 64 bit plain text here. So 64 bit plain text uh, will be first we will do IP, it's called initial permutation. I will explain you guys how we, we can do the permutation. Uh, but again, uh, you guys already have seen the permutation operation in the classical technique. That's exactly the same method we use. Then after permutation, you will still have the 64 bit data. Like we just have, you know, uh, we just have actually uh, a transposition, like transpose the bits in fact. Then here we will have the round one round one within the round one you will have you know um, we will actually use substitution boxes we will do substitution we will use permutation plenty of things will be done here in the round key and then there will be another round of encryption round two and all the way to round 16. we'll have 16 rounds of encryption after the 16 round of course you will have 64 bits of data just like you're getting it like the output of each round is going to be 64 bit and then next operation is swapping we will swap the 32 bits data and after swapping the last is the ip initial permutation inverse and after that you will have your ciphertext okay this is basically the complete structure of a des algorithm again Firstly, whatever your plain text is going to be, we will permute it in the IP stand for initial permutation. Then round one, it will be passed from round one, two, three, and all the way to 16 rounds. And then we will swap it like 32, like swapping mean you will have 64 bit. So we will divide it into 32, 32, and we will swap their locations. And then initial permutation, uh, initial permutation in force. And that's your cipher, uh, cipher text. Now, the thing is how the key generation mechanism will work. Firstly, you will have a 64 bit master key. This is your 64 bit master key. Uh, firstly, what we're going to do is we will permute it again, just like initial permutation, there will be a permutation mechanism. And after permutation, we will get 56 bit of key, like we will truncate it, we will take off uh, the eight bits. And then there is a method which is called LS, left shift. I'll show you guys how it actually works. Left shift will work something like that. Let's say this is your data. Left shift means the bit on the left side will, will be moved to the right side. So like it will become 0011, like circular left shift. And after left shift, what we're gonna do is we will do another permutation. Okay, this is 56 bit data is coming from here. And after passing it from permutation, again truncation, it will actually reduce or it will take off another eight bits and will give you 48 bits. Now this is your key one. This is your K one for round one. And then what we're going to do is whatever the LS 56 bits are coming again, 56 bits will come down from here. Again, we will apply LS 
So you will have 56 bit coming down here with a shifted now again a shift, then pass it from permutation. And after permutation, we will have the key to for round two, again, 48 bits key. This process will go all the way unless you get to the round 16. LS again, 56 bit, and there's gonna be permutation again. And then we will have K16, which is of again, 48 bits. So that's basically the internal structure of a DES algorithm. On your right side, if you see, this is basically the key generation mechanism. And that's basically how we encrypt the data. Now, just to just better understand what we do, how we do permutation, how we do LS, what is inside this round. So just to have a good understanding, uh, let's let's actually uh, take an example of simplified DES, SDES, simplified DES. Uh, which we will use, uh, which we, where we will use a uh, reduce binary example to understand the permutation, left shifting, uh, round stuff like substitution boxes, etc., etc. So let's have a basic understanding of few functions. Okay. So this is the structure for simplified DES. I just uh, try to make a reduce structure. So uh, because the main idea is to just to just to introduce you uh, a few functions like what we do in the rounds. Uh, how the permutation works, how we do the left shift, how we can actually truncate the bits and all that. So on your right side, it's a key generation mechanism. On your left side, this is basically what's, what happens uh, to encrypt the data. And if you see here, similar to DES algorithm, but it is reduced to uh, only two rounds and the key size is 10 bits and the data is gonna be eight bits, just, just for the basic understanding. So just understand, let's see how exactly this algorithm work. We need to keep this particular uh, figure, uh, this algorithm design in mind uh, and let's understand it. So first thing is, if you see, we are getting the 10 bits here. So first step is to get the K1, we have to pass this 10 bit from P10, then left shift one, then permutation eight, and then we will get the uh, K1. And then if you see, uh, to, to get the key to the LS1, whatever you will get from LS1, again LS1 and then P8, and then we will get the key to. So let's generate these two keys first, and then we will see what is inside these um, rounds. Similar to again, again, it's exactly same, or you can say very similar to DES algorithm. So for example, this is our master key, the 10 bit key. That's the 10 bit key. So this is over, for example, that's our master key. And this is the plain text that we need to actually encrypt. So before we start encryption, first of all, we need to have uh, two keys, the round key, because simplified DES has two rounds. Okay, so the first step is uh, permutation 10. If you see the 10 bit keys, we need to apply P10, permutation 10. So for permutation 10, this is basically already we are provided with this sequence. Now, again, both sender and receiver, they will have the same you know, organization, same sequence of permutation 10. Again, it's not fixed. So uh, depending upon the random numbers, like it could be randomly picked, like each time for each uh, session, your permutation 10 could be different. The sequence could be different. So that's P10, let's see how we can apply P10. So the first step is we will write down our key here. Let's say my key is 01010111101. I will write down the number on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's the bit number 10. So when you pass it through P10, you just have to rearrange the bits according to this pattern. So let's say the bit at third position will come here. This is the bit at third position. You can see it will come here. Bit at fifth position will come here, which is zero. Bit at second position is one, which will go here. Bit at seventh position is one, it will go here. Bit at fourth position is one, it will go here. Bit at 10th position will come here. Uh, bit at first position, it's right here. This is zero, will come here. Nine position bit will go here. Eight will go here. Six will go here. So this is basically your data after you pass it through permutation 10. Like this is the bit when you pass it from P10, that's basically where we are right now. Okay, this is basically where we are right now. And the result output is gonna be 0011110011. This is over permuted data, okay? Permuted data. Now next we have to actually do the left shift, 
LS1. Do you see LS1? This is basically where we were. We need to actually do LS1. So what is LS1? LS1, as I told you guys, the bit on your extreme left side will be moved to extreme right side. So if you pass it through LS1, it's going to be like this bit, this bit will go at the end. So now what will happen? Let's, I mean, I will start writing from here. So it's going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And this bit will be appended at the end. So this is basically called left shift 1. So this is what we did. We are right here now. We, I mean, the same data will go down. Okay. So we have to remember that this is our LS1, the first LS1 data. Next is going to be the permutation 8. Like whatever you got from LS1, we will have to actually process it through P8, permutation 8. Uh, let me see. Okay, got it. So this is my permutation 8. And for permutation 8, what I have to do is I need to again write down my the output of LS1. If you see the LS1 and then I will pass it through P8. So this was my output of LS1. I'm going to write it down here. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So let me put down the numbering again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now uh, put all these uh, binary according to this sequence. Bit at number 6, 0. Number 3, 1. Number 7. Bit at number 7 is this. Number 4 is 1. Bit at number 8, 8 is here. Bit at number 5, bit at number 10, bit at number 9. So this is basically our truncated bit. If you see, this is 8-bit data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The thing is, what exactly happened here? They didn't consider bit number 1 and 2. So you can see all the bit beside 1 and 2. That's the truncation method. So now the output of P8 or your key one is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So this is over key number one, round one key. Okay, that's over round one key if you see here. So what we did is we have created this key now. So we did the permutation. That's the permutation. Then we did the LS1, pass it through, uh, I mean, just left shift one. We did it LS1. And then this is basically the permutation. So we did all these three steps and we got our K1. Now let's see uh, how we can get the K2. Exactly the same operation. But now we will take the bit which is, uh, I mean the data which is already left shifted. Like output of this left shifted. We will again left shift it and do the permutation. So just two more operations. So LS1 to LS1. So this is basically the uh, LS1. So let me write down here. So LS1, the previous LS1 is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. I will do again LS1, pass it through LS1. So it's this bit will be appended at the end. So I will start writing from here. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And this bit will become the last. So this is your LS1 output. I mean, now technically speaking, this LS1 output right here. Now, the next is we uh, have to do the permutation 8. Like we need to permute this output uh, according to P8 to get the K2. Exactly the same way we got it. So we will put down the numbering here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And let's see the numbering. If you see, this is the permutation 8. Again, place it in the exactly the same fashion. Let me do it for you guys. So let's see. So here, number six, what is the number, uh, data is number six. Number six is zero, zero will be here. Uh, number three, uh, number three, I'll see number three is this one. And then number seven, number seven is one. Number four, number four is one. Number eight, eight is one. Number five, five is zero. And then number 10, zero, and then uh, number nine zero so this is your k2 this is zero one 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 zero 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 that is your key two round two key this is your round two key okay 
So that's the way how we can generate these keys and that's the way how we do the permutation, okay? Now, I, I believe everybody is well familiar with the permutation, so I'm gonna skip the permutation here. Again, your 8-bit data will be permuted, okay? Exactly the same way how we did for P10 and how we did for P8. But in initial permutation, we don't reduce the data. The size or the length of the data will remain same. Let's see what we do in this FK, which is basically function. Here we uh, we are just considering just for the simplicity, we are considering here we will actually do two operations. One is XOR with the key. Second is using substitution box. These are the two operations which I will introduce you guys. I think XOR is already, you guys are familiar with that. But let's see. So for example, let's say, after getting the eight, again, you see in FK, let me make the block here if I can. Okay, right here. Let me just make a small block here. So let me write down here my PT, the, um, let me see if I have the, okay, the PT plain text. Let's see what's the plain text. Okay, so that's over plain text message, which is of eight bits. And this is the K1 and this is over K2, which we, we just calculated through this operation. If you see, uh, I mean, that's the K1 and K2, okay? Uh, K1 will be used for round one and K2 will be used for round two. Uh, I'm just going to discuss the round one. So let's see how the round one works. And as I already talked about, in the round one, we're gonna use only two operation, ex uh, exclusive or XOR and the substitution box. So let's see. And again, uh, when we do the uh, encryption, uh, sorry, the uh, when we start encrypting our plain text, firstly, we will pass it through initial permutation. Whatever will be the result, we will forward it to round one and then we will do all that stuff. So I'm just skipping the initial permutation because I believe that it's uh, it's very easy now because I mean, it's exactly the same as of your, your permutation 10 is. Okay, now let's see, this is the PT. Let's say I'm using it. It's basically the initial permuted of PT, for example, okay? And now let's see what we're gonna do with this key because for round one, we have K1, like in, when you're getting the key from here, K1 for round one, within FK, we have two things. We are exclusive or with whatever the IP result is. And then we are basically passing it through the substitution box. And then next round, we'll do the same thing and all. So let's see now, this is the internal structure of that F function. So K1, so what we are doing is we will take XOR of K1 with our IP result. So I'm assuming that this is the initial permuted result of PT. So for example, how we can do that. So this is the data 10101101. And that's our key one, which is 0, 01, 0, 01, 1, 1, 0, 1, Okay. Now we will take an XOR between these two. Just uh, XOR. So one zero. So XOR, as you as you guys might remember, if the two bits are different, result is one. Same result is zero. So it is one, 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 zero, 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 zero. So this is basically, if you see, that's our uh, plain text initial permuted plain text and that is over key one and we just have calculated the uh, uh, XOR between the data or the key uh, the key round one key and the initially permuted data next we have to pass it through substitution box in order to actually uh, in order to actually get the final cipher text or in order to get the next data which we will pass it to another uh, another round so in this is basically uh, the cipher, uh, the substitution box. Again, both sender and receiver, they will have this, they will use the same substitution boxes. Now, if you see, this is the S0 and that's over S1. How we use these two substitution boxes by using all that stuff. So let me just uh, make simple for you guys. Let me just take this because whatever we got here, we will do the substitution from the substitution boxes. So let me write down this data here. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. So what we will do is we will actually split the data into two parts. So if you see, we have eight bits, we'll split the data into two parts, all ones on the left side, all zeros on the right side. So this particular left side or left half will select substitution box number zero, this one, and the right side will select substitution box number one. Now, the thing is, if you see here, substitution boxes are written in decimal values and over data is in binary. So 
in order to whenever you you want to use substitution box we have to refer them or use their um their uh, bi uh, binary or i mean binary decimal converter we need to convert this binary into decimal to look the data okay so the left will select the substitution box zero and the right will select substitution box number one so let's say this is the data now what we're going to do is further so we will split it let's say one 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 and zero 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 i mean it's highly unlikely but again that might be the case sometime you will see these so outer two bits will actually select the row of the substitution box inner two bits will select the column okay same is the case right here outer two bits will select the row and the inner two bits will select the column of your substitution box okay the first thing is we need to convert binary to decimal. I'm going to make a small table so everybody will be like, I mean, you will not have any issues. Uh, let me create a simple table. Uh, let's see. Okay, too weird. So it's going to be 0010101. So that's be 0123. I mean, just I, I just created this table just for ease. So outer two bits are basically one one. Outer two bits are one one, which will select the row. Inner two bits are also one one, which will select the column. Same is the case here. Outer two bits will select the row. Inner two bits, which are also zero, will select your column. What is the decimal value of one one? Decimal value of one one is three. Decimal value of one one again here three. Decimal value of zero zero zero, and decimal value for zero zero is again zero. So we need to select in substitution box number zero, we need to select the row three and column three. So where is the row three? This is the row three. Column three, this is the column three. Which value overlaps? You can see the overlapping value is one. So one is the answer here. And let's go up here. Uh, row zero, column zero in substitution box number one. So this is box one, row zero, and the column zero, this is column zero. Which value overlaps this zero answer is zero so again this is the decimal value which we are fetching from the substitution box so binary for one is zero one and binary for row is zero of course zero 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 so the final output is zero one zero zero this is the final output that we are getting from substitution box i getting my point that's the substitution box how exactly it works i can give you one more example for example, the uh, because for example, if this data might be something like that, let's say one zero one zero, uh, let's say zero one one one. For example, that's basically the data inside of that. So again, we will split into two parts. This for S zero, this is for S one. Outer two bits will select the the row. Inner two bits will select column. Same is the case. Outer row inner column so one zero is going to be row and zero one is going to be column here zero one is going to be row and one one is the column so what is the binary a decimal value for one zero decimal value for one zero is two and decimal value for zero one is one here again zero one 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 three so row two here and column one so where is the row two this is row two and the column one this is column one so that's will be the overlapping value two will be answered for this and row one column three row one column three three will be the value which we overlap so three so binary for zero is going to be one zero binary for three is one one so that would be the answer if that would be the data i mean i just gave you example so just to avoid the confusion Okay, so if you guys will have any questions, any issues regarding substitution boxes, please bring it up in the class so we can we can have a discussion on it. So this is, by the way, the complete, uh, I mean, that's basically what we do inside the rounds. This is just one of the glimpse. There are many other functions. Some people use Mangler function, etc., etc. There are many things that actually we do uh, inside this round. So that's basically simplified test. Whatever the output will come here, it will be passed from another round, then IPV, etc etc okay that's basically how the simplified desks will look like
Coming next is the AES algorithm, uh, Advanced Encryption Standard. As I mentioned earlier, this algorithm is basically over federal government standard. Since 2002, they have, they have been using this algorithm. Uh, the block size of AES is 128 bits. That's the block size. And the key size is also of 128 bits. It's 128 bits. Unlike the uh, DES algorithm, here we use uh, number of rounds are only 10. Number of rounds are only 10 rounds. and uh, But we use four sub keys for each round. So four sub keys for each round. And uh, you can say total number of number of sub keys are basically 44. I'll explain you guys how exactly they make it. So basically what exactly they do. So they actually divide uh, the 128 bits, like you have 128 bits here. We actually use or process them in words. So one word is equal to 32 bits. So one word is equal to 32 bits. So you can say total 128 bits has four words. Four words equal to 128 bits. So we actually use four uh, words, okay, for each particular round. So technically speaking, again, for each round, we have uh, 128 bits key. So you can say the size of each size of sub key equal to 38, 32 bits, or you can say one, one, uh, one word. Uh, for each round, we have four keys. For each round, we use four keys, or you can say four words, okay, four words. Uh, let's see how how the structure of this AES algorithm, how it exactly looks like. It's similar to DES algorithm, but slightly more sophisticated as compared to DES algorithm. So let's see. Uh, again, we will have two sides. One is for the uh, key generation and second is going to be for the plain text. So let's say the plain text is, let's say we have a plain text uh, of 128 bits. So the first step of the plain text, this is outside the round. That's the first step. First step is just like initial permutation. Here we just add like modulo to addition of the first round key, which is basically the master key. Just take a modulo to addition. After that, whatever the output is gonna be, we will actually use substitution box, just like we used here. Substitution box, we will pass it from S box after substitution box, we will actually shift rows according to a pattern. Like you have rows, we will actually shift the rows with each other. Then after shifting the rows, just like permutation, then we will mix columns. Again, in a predictable form, we will actually swap the columns, like transposition of the columns. Then the last step of the round is we will add round key again modulo to addition round key this is basically called the round that's around you can see this is substitution box shifting of the rows shift mixing of the columns and adding of the row so whatever output will go here this is basically the round one round two again same way substitution box then shift rows then mix columns then we will have another add round key and then the next. So this is going to be round two. So you can see it will all the way it will go to round 10. And after round 10, whatever your um, value is going to be, it will be your final cipher text. So that's basically what we do in the round. Now, the first step is how we can get the keys. The first key is again, let's say your key zero. This is your first key, the master key. We will divide the key into words. As I mentioned, each word is equal to 32 bits. So we have 120 bits of data. We just have to make them chunks of 32 bit, 32 bit, 32 bit. So this is W1, word one, word two, word three, word four, uh, word four. So this is basically where we will actually, I mean, this is the add zero, one. I mean, it's all the way to three, one, two, three. That's the key. So we will add them block by block. Okay. Then again, uh, in order to get the next key, again, there will be permutation operation and all that stuff. But this is where we will use key one. Again, this is the second key. 
uh, it's going to be four, W4567. Four, okay. Again, we will use swapping and all that operation. Like here, we will have permutation and all that to get the next key. So for next round, we will have another key. This is basically round one. For round two, we will have key two. And for the key two, it's going to be W8, W9, uh, W10, W11. Then for R3, next round, we will have uh, key three. And that's going to be again all the way. So all the way, if you go to round 10, we'll have uh, the last key, which is going to be R10. And for R10, again, when you get to R10, it's W40, uh, 41, 42, 43. So if you see, if you start from here all the way to down here, you can see here, we will have mainly 44 sub keys and the size of each key is a word, which is of 32 bits. So that's basically what we have discussed. So it's the operation is exactly the same, but that's basically the structure of DES, uh, AES algorithm. What basically happens inside the AES algorithm. Again, if anybody will have any questions and issues, please do reach me out. So that's the last part, uh, the last agenda item of chapter number two, uh, which is random number generators. So there are many, many applications of random number generator. We use extensively use random number generators in our uh, cryptography, encryption, decryption, uh, because they provide freshness to the messages. Uh, we can avoid many attacks like tracking attack. I mean, uh, we can actually avoid the replay attack, DOS attack, and many other attacks as well by using pseudo random number generators. Um, for pseudo random number generators to generate identical keys, both sender and receiver, they should have the same pseudo random number generator. So there are many, many pseudo random number generators. Uh, one is LFSR. Still, we use LFSR. It's the most a widely used algorithm, we still use LFSR uh, in our modern communication, including in 5G as well. So LFSR stands for Linear Feedback Shift Register. Linear Feedback Shift Register. Uh, then we have LCG, Linear Congruential, Linear Congruential Generator. Again, another uh, most widely used generator. It has been, I mean, uh, because it's a co it's a very costly LFSR is a cost effective, uh, but the random number which LCG generate it's more random. Like it's it has it will pass all the randomness test. Another one is the gold sequence, gold sequence, and the Kasami sequence. These are some other uh, random number generators as well, based on LFSR extension of LFSR. So let's see what is LFSR, how exactly it works and what are the different applications where we use. So first of all, let me just tell you one thing about LFSR. Number one, LFSR typically, it's basically hardware based. Hardware based. Both sender and receiver, they should have the same hardware for LFSR. Linear feedback shift register. Uh, the period of LFSR, like after... I mean, how many, I mean, generate, it will generate a string and then it will start repeating itself. That's called a period. It's two raised to power N minus one, where this N is equal to number of shift registers involved in designing of a random, uh, in LFSR. Um, it requires the initial seed. If you want to start a random number generator like LFSR to, to generate the keys, it requires a seed. Both sender and receiver, they should have the same key for synchronization, okay? We use LFSR in uh, Bluetooth. For our Bluetooth communication, we use it. We uh, use it for GSM, for 4G networks, and including in 5G as well. And there are many other applications um, outside the domain of communication as well of LS LFSR. Let's see how exactly LFSR in fact works. This is a simple structure of LFSR linear feedback shift register. Now here, if you see here, this is the XOR operation, and that's basically the shift register, which can store only one bit of the data. And they can actually, they work on a clock. Whenever any new bit arrives here, whatever will be stored here, it will be moved to the next bit. So let's understand this concept, how they generate the random numbers. For example, first of all, we have four registers. So firstly, uh, if we have four registers, so, so the period is going to be 
2 raised to power n minus 1. Uh, I think I accidentally wrote minus 1 on the top, but it's minus 1 right here. So 2 raised to power 4 minus 1 is going to be uh, 15. 16 minus 1 is 15. And let's say your initial seed, because to start a random number generator, we need initial seed. Let's say it's 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So let's say this is 1, this is 0, this is 0, and this is 1. We will take output from the last register. Okay. So if you see here, uh, when you will give a clock, so the bits will be, which will be stored on each register will actually shift, like move forward and whatever the connections are, for example. Let's say the bit that will be stored here, when you will give first clock, it will become output. And then if this bit will also go down here and the bit which will store here will also go down here. If you take an XR of 0, 1, as you know, different result is 1. So this one will actually take the position of this previous one. And that one will be moved to here. And this zero will move here and that zero will move here. And this one was became an output. Are you getting a point? This is the process. Now, next time, what's going to happen? This zero, when you will give another shift, this zero will come down. This zero will also come down. Zero, zero, XR, same as zero. Now, this zero will take the position of this one. So this one will map over this one. This one will go here and that zero will become the output of this and this zero will become your output got it the next time what's going to happen again this zero will go down here this one will come down here zero one when you take a exclusive or one zero will become one so this one will now take the position of this zero and this zero will go here this one will go here this one will go here and that zero will become the output Okay, now next time this one will come down here. One will come down here, this one. So one, one, if you take a XR, it's gonna be zero. Now this zero will take position of this one and this one will move here. This zero will move here and this one will move here and this one will become output. So if you continue it, it will generate the random number. Okay, a sequence until 15. When it hit to 15, because that's the period. Then it will actually start over. Okay, so this is basically how linear feedback shift register it actually works. Please let me know if you guys will have any question regarding it. Okay, now the next is going to be over LCG, which is a linear congruential generator, LCG. LCG is slightly, uh, it requires more resources as compared to LFSR, uh, linear congruential generator. The equation is XI plus 1 equal to axi plus c mod m <clears throat> mod m is of course as you know it's basically a limit we already talked about it in caesar cipher so again it's a random number generator so it needs a seed so seed is going to be let's say whatever you want to give so seed is going to be the first xi like the first number and it will continue to generate the numbers other than that, these are some variable, fixed variable, like A is a variable, C is a variable, fixed value, in fact, M is also a fixed value. Let's say A is equal to, for example, let's say 3. C is equal to, let's say, for example, 5. And for example, M is equal to 7. So it will generate the random numbers uh, from 1 to 7. That's basically how it will, because M is the limit. And let's say seed XI, like X0, because this i could be 0, 1, 2, and all the way. So for example, x0, the first random number, uh, which is a seed, let's say it is, for example, let's say 1. Or let's say, let's take it 2, for example, 2. Let's say it's 2. So let's see how exactly it works. So i is equal to 0. So we are going to have i plus 1 is 0. x1 equal to a, what is x0, plus c, mod m. Let's put the values. A is 3, which is fixed. Multiply with x0, which is 2, plus c, which is 5, mod 7. So 3, 6 plus 5 is 11. So it's going to be 11 mod 7. Now, as you can see, this value is greater than uh, 7. So we can actually divide it. 11 here, 7. So number 1, so it's going to be 4. So the first random number x1 is going to be 4. You can calculate the binary for 4 if you want. Uh, of course, we need the data in binary. So now next is i is equal to 1 now. The second random number. 
Now we will have x2, if you see here, 1 plus 1 is 2, and i1, so it's going to be ax1 plus c mod m. Now to generate, get the next gener random number, we'll use the value, this value. So now a is again fixed, which is 5 plus 4 plus 5 mod 7. Um, sorry, A is I think 3. Yes, A is 3. Sorry, A is 3. So A is 3. C was 5 actually. So uh, 3, 4 uh, multiply 12 plus 5 mod 7. So it's going to be 17 mod 7. So if you calculate it, 17, 7, 2, 14, what basically remainder 3. 3 is the next random number. So then if you if you go for next next is i is equal to 2 now we will calculate uh, 3 and then the process will go on so that's the way how it will generate the random number it involves complex mathematics so that's why the linear congruential generator is a bit expensive as compared to linear feedback shift register where we are just shifting the bits we are not doing anything just one exclusive order just shifting the bits so it's extremely cost effective but here you can see the addition multiplier so it's it's kind of a uh, expensive one the last two uh, random number generators that we we talked about it's basically a uh, gold sequence and the kasami sequence so gold sequence and kasami sequence are basically based on um, LF, uh, lfsr it's the extended form of lfsr the structure is basically something like that we have one lfsr here lfsr1 then we are just taking XOR between two LFSRs. Like the structure of LFSRs should be different. Then you will get the output. This is basically how gold sequence can be generated. For example, this first LFSR could be something like that. That's a three bits, for example. You're getting this is output. We are basically calculating XOR and whatever is output, it's going here. For example, this is LFSR one. LFSR could be two, could be something like that, for example. Output is taken from here. We are taking and uh, now XOR from here. Bit is going here. So this tap position matters a lot. For example, if you have same tap locations, what will happen? Please remember that it will give you zero. Why? Because if you have the same LFSR, it will generate some random number. Other one will also generate the same values. So if you will take XOR, it will give you zero. So that's this. That location, like exile location, matters a lot for gold sequence. Uh, the Kasami sequence is also very similar to that. The gold sequence extended form of that. Here we will have one of LFSR1. And then we will have LFSR2. Then what we are doing is, we are basically, firstly, we are creating a group. This will also, again, grouping, like encapsulation, blocks. And after blocks, then what we are doing is, we are basically swapping them by changing the location, swapping them in a different, again, at per permutation, and then XOR. So it's like two main operations, so slightly more, much better uh, than gold sequence. Let me explain to you guys. For example, after this LFSR, you, are, you got the output, let's say, I'm talking about this. Let's say you got the output 10111001, for example. So what we will do is we will actually divide it into two two bits. Okay, in the group, this is the grouping. After grouping, swapping. Let's say permutation is, this is one, two, three, four. Permutation says or swapping says, four will come here, two will come here, three will come here, one will here. So four, like this is, will be the group one, zero, one, 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 three, one, zero. And the one is gonna be this, one, zero. So now this is basically the out of swapping. Here we will use a different swapping, not the same swapping. Okay, please remember that it could be, I mean, it could be same, but in Kasami sequence, just to increase the randomness, they use a different permutation stuff. Okay, because in any case, you will get the different LFSR values. If you use different LFSR, output will be different. And then the XOR. So this is basically what a Kasami sequence is. So that's it about chapter number two. Uh, if anybody will have any questions, please bring all the questions in the class. Okay, see you guys in class.